On today's episode, how millennials are shaping the modern workplace. Welcome to Plain English, the podcast that goes at the right speed for English language learners. Listen now and read the transcript online at plainenglish.com. Now, here's Jeff, your host for today's episode. They are the generation born between 1982 and the early 2000s, so they are between about age 15 and call it 35 to 37 years old today. And as they become a greater and greater share of the workforce, they are changing the entire culture of work. Today, I'm going to use the word they to describe the millennials because I technically am not one. I was born in 1981, so I just barely miss the technical definition of a millennial. The idea for today's episode came from a listener, Julio, in Monterrey, Mexico. And I was telling Julio that I sometimes feel in between at work. On the one hand, I do identify with and agree with a lot of the things you'll hear about today about millennials at work. But on the other hand, I do share some of the values and perspectives of the generation that came before. Today's episode is going to be a good one And I know from corresponding with so many of you over email and WhatsApp that we have a lot of millennials in the workforce in this audience. So make sure to let me know what you think of today's episode, and I'll share some perspectives of fellow listeners in the future. I guess I should open the show. You guys know all this by now, but just for those people who are new, this is Plain English, a podcast for learning and practicing English. And as you can tell, we go a little bit slower than normal speed. And that is so that you can understand all the words. Today is episode 142, and you can find a full transcript at plainenglish.com slash 142. By the way, on the transcripts, I know you guys read them closely. In fact, Leandro from Brazil sent me a note telling me I missed a word in the transcript. That's how I know you guys read them so closely. Now, what happens is I write the episodes out in advance, and I try to write them so that they'll sound natural when I read them out loud. But sometimes, sometimes when I'm reading, I want to skip a word or change one or add a word or something like that. So... It's not 100% precise, but I think part of the fun for you guys might be to see when I make little changes. So the transcript, again, is available at plainenglish.com slash 142. A couple quick details and we'll get started. The number to connect with us on WhatsApp is plus one. 312-967-1042. And if you'd like to get in touch by email, just go to plainenglish.com slash mail, M-A-I-L. If you go there and enter your details, you'll get a series of welcome messages from me, plus a summary of every new episode in the future, all for you at plainenglish.com slash mail. 
They are the most studied generation in history. The millennials came of age during an era of rapid technological change, growing up with smartphones and other learning technology faster than their parents. They were kids when the terrorist attacks of September 11th happened, and they grew up during the subsequent conflicts. So they've grown up in a world that has been much more preoccupied with security. At the same time, they have traveled more, experienced different cultures, and in many ways have grown up faster than previous generations. They are more likely than ever to have non-traditional family compositions. And now they are at work. Millennials now comprise about a third of the workplace. And by 2025, they and the generation behind them, sometimes called Generation Z, will make up a full 75% of the labor force. Go to any modern workplace these days and you'll see the same thing. Managers trying to make the company more amenable to millennials. Millennials want many of the same things that people have always wanted at work. Fair pay, good benefits, good working conditions, and time off. But the values of this generation differ in many important ways from those of previous generations, and companies these days spend a lot of time trying to change their workplace cultures to accommodate this new generation. What are those new values? Let's start with the big one, purpose. Millennials want to have purpose in their work lives. They want to know that what they do at work makes a valuable contribution to the world. It doesn't mean everyone has to save the oceans or cure cancer. Anyone can have purpose in their job. Your job could be to sweep floors, but your job can have purpose if you know you're providing a clean and safe workplace for a company you believe in. So many companies, in response, are developing mission statements and trying to connect what they do to the broader good. Companies that make drinks don't just provide juice and soda, they bring joy into their customers' lives. Dunkin' Donuts, a coffee chain in the United States, brands itself as powering the whole country with caffeine. And they do that for me, by the way. Consulting firms don't just do jobs and projects for their clients. They make the world work better. A restaurant doesn't just serve meals. It brings people together and nourishes the soul. Do you see how this is all about purpose? A furniture store doesn't just put chairs and tables in your house. It creates a better everyday life for people. They're all about connecting what they do at work to making the world a better place. So even the clerk at a furniture store can have purpose by serving that mission. Another value millennials have is learning. They are the generation that grew up with technology, so they have seen how rapidly the world changes, how rapidly technology changes, 
and how quickly certain jobs can become obsolete. Nobody wants to be left behind by a changing world. In a single working life, people can have multiple careers, changing their focus and skill sets multiple times. For that reason, millennials want to be constantly learning, whether that's through formal learning and development programs, or just the ability to switch roles, rotate responsibilities, and gain new experiences. What else do millennials want? Oh, feedback. Feedback is the word we use for when managers or supervisors tell us how we are doing. You know the way it used to be? This was true when I started work back in 2003. Once a year, you'd go into your manager's office, sit down, and listen as he or she judged you on your performance from the year before. You wouldn't hear feedback from your manager again for a whole year after that. Well, that is no more. Now, companies are introducing rapid feedback cycles, at minimum every quarter, but in many cases, once every week or two. Millennials want to know how they're doing. They want to be able to improve and then see tangible results in their feedback. And companies are not just looking backward. This is also in response to millennial values. They are turning the feedback process on its head and making it as much about the future as about the past. Millennials want to know what they should be doing differently in the future in order to perform better and continue learning. Here's another one, and I suspect this is more a North American and possibly a European thing, but today's workers value flexibility. With all the technological change, many of our jobs are not 9 to 5 gigs any longer. We're expected to be in contact after hours. I hear from so many of you who work with colleagues on different continents, different countries, so I know what that means. Calls early in the morning and late at night, right? In exchange for these extra demands on their time, Millennials want some more flexibility in the way they work, being able to work at home or from a coffee shop or from another city are all perks that millennials value. In fact, studies say that changing up your work environment from time to time helps improve employee engagement. So what happens if workplaces fall short on some of these measures? Well, that brings us to our last property of millennials. They move around a lot. They're not afraid to quit their jobs and look for something new. It used to be, in my parents' generation, that you would stay at the same job for a long time, 20, 25, even 30 years or more was very common once upon a time. Today, it's very different. Today, it's common to see people change jobs every couple of years. It helps that the economy has been improving steadily 
for the last eight or nine years, at least in the U.S. Before moving, millennials research their new companies to make sure they're going to be happy. They look at sites like Glassdoor.com, which is like Yelp or TripAdvisor, but for the workplace. As a result, many companies are spending more time burnishing their brands, making sure their company is viewed in a favorable light by the newest generation in the labor market. I think all of these are related to the first point: purpose, being engaged, being happy at work. Not everyone achieves that, but this generation is more and more attuned to connecting their work with their values, and they're willing to move around until they find a good balance for them. I mentioned at the beginning that I identify with the millennial generation in a lot of ways, even though I was technically born just a year before this generation supposedly started. The one way I definitely agree is that I don't want a job just for a paycheck. I'm really unhappy if I start feeling that way. At my previous job, I started to feel that way. I wasn't engaged. I wasn't feeling like what I was doing made any difference in the world. I was doing work that we got paid for, but I kept wondering, what's the point of all this? Why am I doing this? And then I moved to my current job, and I've been with my current firm for a little over nine years. And even in this job, I've had times where I've felt less engaged, but I was able to change things up without leaving the company. I've moved twice, actually moved cities. And recently, I changed the kind of work I do without having to leave my company. So I definitely do have some of these same values of flexibility, learning, feedback, and wanting a purpose at work that are characteristics of the millennial generation. Now, I'm really curious about what you all think about this. Admittedly, I think I wrote this with a North American bias, since that's what I know best. But I have a feeling some of these themes are consistent with what you see around the world. But please let me know. Like I said before, I'd love to share some of your feedback, some of your thoughts, with the rest of the audience. So send me a message to Jeff J E F F at plainenglish dot com, or send me a WhatsApp message to plus one three one two nine six seven eighty seven fifty seven. I had some good expressions to choose from in today's episode. But the one I chose is to turn something on its head. When you turn something on its head, you make it the opposite of what it once was, or you totally change the way people think about something. Here's how you first heard it: feedback. Is the process of getting a review of your performance from your managers or supervisors. Time was you got feedback like once a year, and it was very backward-looking. What did you do right last year? 
What did you do wrong last year? Well, now companies are turning this whole process on its head in response to the millennial generation and in response to new research. Instead of meeting just once a year to talk about the past, feedback these days is about meeting more often and focusing the conversation on the future. What can you do in the future to improve? What new experiences do you need to continue to advance? How can we do better together in the future? The conversation is turned on its head. Once it was infrequent, one way, and looking backwards, now it's frequent, collaborative, and looking forward. Here's another example. There's a new app called Capsule, and it only works in New York City for now. But it's taking the process of getting prescription medicine and turning it on its head. Now, for most of us, including me, it's no fun getting a prescription. First of all, you're probably sick or ailing when you need it. The last thing you want to do is go to a store. Then you have to have your doctor send the prescription to a pharmacy. Then you go to the pharmacy. You wait in line at the tall counter. You tell them your name. Then you wait while they fill it. You're miserable. You're sick. Then you pay. Get back in your car. Go home. That's what it's like to get a prescription here. Capsule is turning that on its head. They are a prescription delivery service. Your doctor tells them the prescription and they'll just take it to wherever you are. At work, at home, doesn't matter. They are turning the whole process on its head. It used to be miserable and now it is convenient. I don't need a lot of prescriptions, but when I do, I hate going to the pharmacy. So hopefully, Capsule comes to Chicago sometime soon, or I'll just get sick in New York next time. Technology is turning language learning on its head. Before, you would sit in a big classroom and listen to a teacher, who is usually not a native speaker, teach to a big class. But with new technology, you can practice individually and even get an individual teacher by the hour via Skype. You can get podcasts, slow them down, speed them up. I know you guys do that. There are great videos online, tons of language learning apps. You can get stuff for free or for a lot cheaper than going to a classroom. Not to mention... Mosalingua at plainenglish.com slash learn. So technology is turning language learning on its head. Before we go, I want to say hi to a few listeners. Felipe from Brazil is listening to prepare himself for an internship in India. I was joking with him that I don't think anyone can be really prepared for an internship in India. You just have to go experience it. It's a crazy place, and I don't think anything can prepare you for it. Carlo from Italy is studying aerospace engineering in Rome. Hi, Carlo. Thanks for listening. And Guilherme from Brazil listens on Spotify and he introduced the program to his friend Johnny. I love it when people listen together 
and spread the word. So thanks, Guillerme and Johnny, for listening. The number to reach me on WhatsApp if you want to get in touch is plus one three one two nine six seven eighty seven fifty seven. And as you know, I love hearing your audio messages. Just last week alone, I heard from people from all over Colombia, Morocco, Uruguay, France, Indonesia, Germany, Israel, even one or two people from the United States. How about that? Near and far. That's all for today's program. Thanks for being with us as always. JR and I will be back on Thursday for another episode. See you then. Thank you.